again, if you were finger pointing and all that stuff and people, you know, getting ready to, you know, uh, strangle each other and put them in headlocks, then yeah, I get it. But, you know, in the East, maybe, you know, if it was the West, okay. But in the East, I think you got a little leeway to make time up. You don't want to be trying to make time up, but if you, if you, if you want to be somewhere where you got to make time up, you're going to want to be in the Eastern conference instead of Western conference, because in the Western conference, you might be out of it, you know, but they will figure that out. They will play good basketball and then they will get back to Cleveland basketball winning. And then we'll be talking about LeBron and all this stuff. Will they make it to the Eastern Conference Final? Will they make it to the NBA Finals? Will they run into the Golden State Warriors? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a lot harder. But it's very interesting, though. The NBA. Oh, my gosh. You know, uh, and, and and they're holding their own with the NFL because the NFL, you know, has been, been really hot. And it got hot. Over the you know past couple days as well, so we'll get into that a little bit later on in the show. We won't talk about it right now, but we definitely will touch base you know on that. So uh, we were talking about college football earlier with you know Florida finding a new coach or looking for a new coach and who would be you know a good candidate. But these teams don't have a problem with with coaching; they are in prime position. So. Uh, this past Tuesday, which was yesterday, uh, the the NCAA came out with their top 10 teams for the playoffs. Now, of course, only four makes it, but you got 10 because anything could happen in the next few weeks where players, you know, where teams will drop and then people will try to leapfrog to, uh, leapfrog to other teams. So your top 10, if you do not know who they are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the top 10 right now. OK, so the top 10. Starting out is the U, Miami University. They are right now sitting at 7-0. and Now, I thought that they would be a little bit higher than 10. Uh, of course, in, in previous polls, they were 8. And then when they won last week, surprisingly, they went down. They went to 9. And now they're at 10. You know, so scheduling is hurting them, you know, a little bit. But here's the thing. There's a lot of one one loss teams that they're going to have to jump, you know, jump through. But these teams could be two loss teams to help them. So if they keep running the table. They got a chance maybe to get into the four spot. I wouldn't. That's the only shot that they got is getting in the four. Nothing. I mean, everyone will have to fall apart pretty much for Miami to get higher than that. But the good thing about with Miami is that. This record and this display that they're putting up and, and, and winning some of these close games, this is going to help with recruiting. This is going to help Mark Ritt, you know, get some of those those uh, players that University of Miami, Miami used to get. You know, they're trying to get back to that, not to the whole, you know, uh, guys that get in trouble or, you know, guys that may be a question mark on their team because that's not really Mark Ritt. That's not his style. But getting back to competitive football on that team and being able to say the you, and, you know, and, and people be like, oh, I know who you're talking about, you know. So number nine on this team uh, on this list is also Wisconsin. They are eight and old. So, you know, they haven't hit a bye, you know, yet. So that should be coming up pretty soon. Uh, TCU uh, is eight. They are above. This is one of the uh, one loss teams I was telling you about. Uh, and they just recently lost. They lost to a good. Um, I think it was Iowa State, if I remember correctly, uh, Iowa State team that's pretty good uh, in their own right. Penn State is at number seven. Of course, we know they just went seven and one after that crazy game, you know, that they had with with Ohio State. So they are basically in the middle of the pack, if you will, uh, when it comes to the top 10. Number six is Ohio State. So, of course, Ohio State, they lost one game, which was to, you know, Oklahoma, uh, which makes sense is why Oklahoma is number five. So they're going to be one step ahead. So that makes sense. Penn State at seven. They're at seven because they lost to Ohio State. Ohio State is at six because they lost to Oklahoma. Uh, and and games that that's 
earlier in the season, you know, may not that you lose doesn't hurt you as much as recent games. So that's why I said it makes sense. Penn State at seven, Ohio State six, and Oklahoma at five. So uh, number four is Clemson. Now, here's the thing about, you know, about Clemson. People are going to be like, well, wait a minute. Clemson lost to Syracuse, you know? Yeah, but their strength of schedule uh, and teams that they've played has has been pretty strong. So people are going to look at Syracuse as, oh, that was a, you know, fluke loss. And, and you know, sometimes you just have it. Sometimes you don't. But they can't they can't lose any more games as we know no team you know as i don't think any team has made the playoffs with two losses so you can't you lose any any more games which i don't think they will well they could they could lose in the acc you know uh championship game but right now where they're at i think is good number 3 it's Notre Dame. Notre Dame has finished it. Um, and Notre Dame always the one thing about Notre Dame, even though you know I am not a Notre Dame fan at all, and I can't stand Notre Dame uh, being a Michigan fan, but Notre Dame, they always they they they're individual team, they're independent team, so they they don't belong in any conference, so. To get acknowledgement and to get in this uh, uh, um, playoff race, you have to take some tough games. They've got one loss, which was against Georgia. They're taking on teams that probably a lot of a lot of schools wouldn't take on during the season. So one loss is good, and especially two one one loss. And I'll tell you why in a second. But number two surprisingly is Alabama. Alabama is 8-0. Uh, they've been number one the entire, you know, uh, year until this r- ranking came out. But we all know with Nick Saban, one, two, three, really don't matter. Four, it really don't matter with them. They just want to get to the playoffs. If they get into the playoffs, they got a chance at any of these spots. Four, three, two. Uh, to me, Alabama is the only team that that will. Uh, how can I say Alabama is really like? Well, I said earlier they they're the only team that they don't need a particular ranking to get them to the promised land or get them to their goal. You can put them at any of the top four spots, and I'm gonna still consider them one. Because when the playoffs start, they they lock in and they are hard to beat, you know. And they've been like that for years consistently. So them being at number two is not, you know, uh, it is surprising a little bit. But also it's just like, well, it really don't matter. You know, you can put them at four, uh, but they won't be at four because if they do lose a game, they don't want them to drop because Alabama would probably drop from two to three if they lose, you know, lose a game, you know. So that leaves Georgia at number one. Uh, and I, I was taken back by that. I was just like, wow. I, you know, I thought Georgia would be in the top four. I thought Georgia would be number two. You know, uh, they're eight. No, as well with Alabama. So they basically flip flop. Number one to me helps out Georgia a lot because I believe if they have to see which it seems like they will if they got to see Alabama in the SEC championship game they're going to lose that game they'll still be undefeated until that game they'll lose that game and then they'll go from one to two I think they'll just flip-flop they'll go from one to two and then Georgia being in the two spot will probably be better uh so that they're not having to see Alabama at all and of course this is all if if they run the table you know, and get to to SEC championship and, and they see each other. So uh, I, I really don't have a problem with with the rankings at all. I, I'm not, you know, saying, oh, someone got robbed or anything like that. But it's, it is, you know, something to keep an eye on. I, and it, that middle of the pack 
like I was telling you about, the Penn State's, you know, can they bounce back? The Ohio State, is this the real Ohio State that we saw, you know, uh, last Saturday? Can they do some uh, Clemson, their defending champs? What happens with that? And Oklahoma, Oklahoma has always had promise, but then they, they fall short. They, something happens, you know, that just out of, you know, just not normal. It's just like, where did that come from? And, and, and Oklahoma ended up losing the game. So, but I like the list. I, I, I really don't have a problem with anyone on the list. Um, one, two, three, four through, through 10, you know, I, I think everyone has, has a legitimate beef or legitimate right to be on this top 10 list. So, uh, jumping into the chat room real quick, uh, Clay, my man, Clay, uh, Black Queen Hero Davis has said, if Alabama loses a game, they shouldn't make the playoffs, period. They don't have a good schedule. Well, Clay, they, they're they going to make it regardless. It's just Alabama. You know, uh, they're dominant. And I don't want to say that they get the benefit of the doubt, but they to a certain degree, they do, you know. It is what it is, you know. But when they play, when they play the top teams, they give them hell. So I, I see your point, but you know, they'll be there. They'll be there. That uh, they they'll be there. Miss Mocha Bella, she said Chip Kelly in Florida. Going back to what we were talking about, uh, who Florida should get? She said no way, Mocha. I'm telling you. That man loves power. He loves being in charge. And they would give him the reins there at Florida. He'll probably be there. He, he, he'll at least, I think he'll at least get a call, you know. Um, and then they'll see, you know, what happened, you know, from there. But uh, let me see if I can get an update for you uh, going on in the World Series. Uh, I told you before that it was 5-0, uh, and, and Houston had jumped all over the Dodgers early, and that continues to be the score. It's the bottom of the third, uh, and uh, nothing has changed so much. So uh, there's your update for the World Series. Please, L.A., get back in this thing. I need you to get back in it. I'm, I'm not cheering for L.A. or a fan of either one. I'm just cheering for a good game seven. You don't want those six games to be that great, and then you have a dud in seven, and it'd be a blowout, and you're like, dang, we should have just ended at six, you know, and and, and let, them, let them go through there. But that's where we're at right now. Um, and where we're at, and going is that we're going to go into some uh some of this NFL just let's review the first half of the NFL cuz I said some stuff you know at the beginning of the season I said some stuff preseason I said some stuff in tra- training camp you know and some of it was good some of it wasn't too good, you know, but we'll talk about what either, you know, both of them, what what good and bad that happened in just a moment. And we'll come back. You listen to the Wait a Minute Show with your man, Jelani, J.B. Bodie on the Two Live Studios Radio Network. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Vince Wright, the sports governor, and you know me from the Sports Done Right show. But when I'm not doing Sports Done Right, I'm in the executive mansion chilling with the Wait a Minute show. That's right, Jelani Lopan. Indeed. Keep it tuned here, y'all. The Wait a Minute show. My name is Vince Wright, and I approve this message. What's up, sports fans? You're looking for a different type of sports talk show, something you haven't heard before. You gotta check out the BS3 Sports Show every other Saturday on Two Live Stews Radio, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Sports talk at its finest. Always have great guests playing some good hip hop. You don't want to miss it. Make sure to tune in to the BS3 Sports Show every other Saturday 
at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern.